Great. Let's start. Welcome. Welcome to the Singularity Day. As you know, the lectures are short and the schedule is very tight. So I would like to encourage everybody to ask the questions as personal questions in the next week or two or three. Most of the speakers are here for several weeks. Okay, um, our first speaker is Lorenzo Maxim from University of Wisconsin. All right, thank you, Richard, for putting this up um, for all of us. So secretly, this was a meeting about characteristic classes. Uh, it had singularities in the title as well, so I tried to mix the two. <coughs> um, so I guess every, I shouldn't start with everybody. Most people know about rational singularities and Dubois singularities. I'm talking about algebraic geometers here. So they appear a lot in the minimal model program and uh, more recently using harsh theory or harsh theoretic methods, um, Mustaza, Popa, Saito, and their many collaborators introduced higher versions of this kind of singularity. So what I want to do today is to briefly remind you what these things are and then show you how they are related to characteristic classes. Um, <clears throat> So let me start with this, recalling the two classical generalizations of the Durham complex. In the singular case, one is given by the Durham, com the Durham complex of Keller differentials, denoted by the same symbol, and the other one is the Dubois complex. And um, there is a natural morphism between them, which in the smooth case is a quasi-isomorphism. Now, uh, I'm going to do what you usually do with the Durham complex with the stupid filtration, the holomorphic forms are, the forms themselves are graded pieces of the Durham complex. So I'm going to do the same here with the Dubois complex. I, I'm going to take these graded pieces and put them in the right uh, spot after shifting. <coughs> I have to warn you, these are complexes, they're not sheaves. So they're complexes with coherent cohomology. They are, used, they are obtained by um, the derived push forward from a simplicial resolution. And what do we do with these things? Well, maybe I should say, oops, ah, I made the slides last night after some beer, so I forgot to put the pauses. Um, <clears throat> in the smooth case, of course, as I said, the graded pieces are just the, the usual forms. And what do we do with these two definitions? Um, I'm going to take the induced map on the graded pieces of the, the scalar differentials and the uh, higher Dubois, the, the Dubois complex. And I'm going to ask that this induced morphism is an isomorphism of complexes up to uh, level k. So if you remember the definition of uh, Dubois, this recovers the case of Dubois when k is 0. All right. Now, <clears throat> there is an analogous uh, notion for uh, higher rational singularities. This was introduced by Friedman and Laza. Um, and it goes through a resolution of singularities. So you take a resolution of singularities, a resolution of the singular locus by a normal crossing divisor, and k rational singularities means that this natural morphism from Keller differentials to the push forward of the log forms from the resolution is an isomorphism up to level k. Again, one can work it out that in the case k is equal to zero, you get the usual notion of rational singularities. And then the question is, okay, how to understand this, these types of singularities, how to detect them, which is one and not the other, and so on. So I'm going to cheat a little bit and put the main, one of the examples on the next slide so that you stop asking these kind of questions. Um, to get to this example, you have to go through many other things, but uh, this is one of the main examples, this kind of Briscoe type singularities. So K Dubois means the sum of uh, um, reciprocals of the exponents is greater or equal K plus one, and K rational means strictly greater than K plus one. This is just one example to keep in mind. So of course you can make up any example you want of any sort of uh, any level of k Dubois of k or k rationality. Now, another example that's <clears throat> quite common is this uh, quotient or toroidal singularity. So if I work with a hypersurface with such singularities, then it's known that it's irrational, but they're not one rational, for example. So typically, 
the higher you go in the level of rationality or the oneness, the weaker the singularity is. And once you go past the dimension, at least for the local complete intersection situation, once you go past the half of the dimension of the variety, you get smoothness. I'm not going to put all these results here, but I'm, I'm saying them because the subject is quite broad already. All right, so what's the relation between higher Dubois and higher rational? It's, this, uh, these are best understood in the case of locally complete intersection. In fact, there are still many open questions aside, uh, away from this case. So let's assume I have a local complete intersection in a smooth variety, and then um, the results of Mostaza, Popa, and Friedman Laza say that just like in the case of rational implies Dubois, K rational implies K Dubois. But in this case, you can do more. K Dubois also implies K minus one rational. So <coughs> um, these are, there are lots of works about this. Initially done in the case of hypersurfaces, then more recently done in the case of local complete intersection. These things will come up also in what I say. I'll focus here on the case of globally defined hypersurfaces because I like vanishing cycles, but everything works for arbitrary hypersurfaces, and this is where Saito stepped in, and uh, he told us that by gluing, you can extend these results to arbitrary hypersurfaces. All right, so now I want to introduce characteristic classes, and uh, the third part would be connecting the two. So spectral characteristic classes, the word spectral should be related to spectrum, the Hodge spectrum. And since this is a conference about equivariant things, there should be some monodromy popping up. So uh, let me introduce them. So I have a complex algebraic variety. Um, I take mixed social modules on that variety. I defer this to York. He promised he'll say a lot about them. Just the same like you. <laughs> um, let me just use uh, HI for either Borel Moore homology and even degrees or, or, or the Chow groups. And then the spectral classes uh, are defined by some transformation. Maybe let me write it here. On the Grothendieck group of Mixosh modules, this is an abelian category, Mixosh modules. Take the Grothendieck group. And I'm assuming I work with mixed such modules with the finite order automorphism, and I take the Grothendieck group of such things. I call this the monodromic Grothendieck group. So this is, I will put it on the next slide, but it's more like, for your information, I don't expect people to digest the definition in, in two minutes. Um, this was introduced in earlier work with uh, Jorg and the Morihiko Saito. And as I said, it's a characteristic class version of this uh, Hodge spectrum that people perhaps have seen and like. All right, so what's the definition? Let me start in the smooth case, the definition of spectral classes. I start in the smooth case, and let's take a mixed social module. So with, with a finite order automorphism of, let's say, order E. Now, mixed social modules under, well, have some D modules, filter D modules, um, uh, associated to, to, to the picture, so let's, I'm calling that curly M, with F being the filtration, I always work with filtered left D modules, and take this eigen, eigen, I don't know how you call this, eigen decomposition, uh, in pieces on which the, the automorphism just takes the constant value lambda, lambda being an E root of unity. So what I'm going to do, people perhaps if are more familiar to the notion of uh, motivic churn class, I guess at least half of people here have seen that. So I'm going to do motivic churn classes for these m lambdas, and then I'm going to collect them together in a polynomial, just like one does for the spectrum with some weird powers. And the powers come exactly from the residues of these lambdas, so I, let me put it down. So. You can blink here, you can close your eyes, but let me at least put down what these things are. So, I'm gonna <laughs> take these graded parts of the Durham complex. So each, each D module of this sort has a Durham complex associated to it. This is filtered, if you'd like, by Griffith's transversality. Take the graded pieces of that, you get a complex with of, of O modules with coherent cohomology. Take the Class of that in the Grothendieck group of coherent sheaves, 
And what I'm doing here, I'm applying the thought class transformation to it. So I land in the Borel more homology or chow. And now, <clears throat> if you don't have any monodromy into play, what you'd put here is T to P, or minus T to P, depending on the convention. But just like in the case of spectrum, since I work with the lambda eigenspace here, I'm going to correct the power by the residue of the eigenvalue lambda. The residue means exponential of 2 pi i times the residue is lambda. Again, whatever this is, if you work over a point space where mixed source modules become mixed source structures, you recover the definition of the Hodge spectrum. Okay, in the singular case, we do what Saito does. You work with local uh, embeddings into smooth varieties, and then you can extend to complexes by simply applying this construction to each cohomology of the complex. Okay, so now I have two... Uh, apparently unrelated, uh, well, maybe I should, before I say that, let me just give you the very specific example I'm going to be interested in. Uh, vanishing cycles, of course, so I will have a globally defined hypersurface, I have a vanishing cycle complex, defined by, uh, well, locally this encodes the cohomology in the Miller fiber, or reduced cohomology in the Miller fibers, and I can define it uh, by this functor of vanishing cycles of the elite. Saito lifted this definition to mix such modules with the decomposition into um, unipotent and non-unipotent parts, but to get a lift to mix such modules, you need to shift. This is what's called the perverse shift. All right, so now um, there is a very nice mix such modules on the ambient smooth space that we all like, is the constant shift, if you like, shifted by the uh, dimension of the variety. I'm going to apply this, this complex to it and I end up with a mix -wash module here. But for what I care about, I want to shift it back so that the underlying sheaf or complex of sheaves is just the vanishing cycles like I wrote it here. All right, so here is the, <coughs> the spectral hertzberg miller class of the hypersurface. It's just this spectral class that I defined earlier applied to this complex of vanishing cycles with the semi-simple part of the monodromy uh, as the finite order automorphism. All right, it's supported on the singular set, uh, has motivic features, it doesn't contain negative powers, and so on. These are the relationships now between uh, rational singularities, and, well, higher Dubois, higher rational, and characteristic classes. I only want to present here maybe one theorem. Uh, the same setup of a global hypersurface in, in a smooth variety. It's very possible I forgot the plus one here. We'll see. It doesn't matter. Um, as I said, this, this miller hitzebrook classes, or spectral ones, are... Uh, Characteristic classes with fractional powers, so let's just take the coefficient of t to the alpha, uh, be denoted by something. And then the result that we have is that k Dubois implies the vanishing of the spectral classes, uh, spectral Hirzebrunner <coughs> classes, the, restriction, the, 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 the coefficients of t to the alpha for alpha less than k plus 1, and k rational implies something similar, but with an extra vanishing at k plus 1. So, um, <clears throat> the converse, if I want to characterize these things completely, the converse implications are true if the singular locus is projective. So, there are many things coming up here. Um, this is related to positivity properties of thought classes uh, in the projective, for projective varieties. Uh, you cannot, this is a typical question, so you get the question we get. We cannot replace projective by compact. And there is a weird example of Hironaka that um, tells us that. And we cannot drop compactness either. So this is the best one can do in the case of really characterizing k-dibonus and k-rationality by characteristic classes. 
All right, so the case k is equal to zero was already proved in my earlier work with uh, Morihiko and York. And in the case of isolated singularities, this was already done by Ishii. So I guess Ishii's result was motivation for us to extend it to non-isolated singularities in the classical rational and Dubois case. And this is a generalization what I'm putting up here. So what's behind this? So behind this, uh, there are many things, but somehow, as usual, things fit nicely together. So you have to dig a little deeper into a theory of mixed wash modules. So there is this nice mixed wash module. As I said, take the constant shift on the ambient smooth space shifted by the dimension and apply vanishing cycles to it. You end up with a mixed wash module on the hypersurface. And as a mixed wash module, this is a harsh filtration, a weight filtration, and so on. So what's happening here is that K rationality is really encoded by vanishing of, of the horse filtration up to level k plus one. I wrote it here as a graded piece. So graded pieces of the horse filtration of this mixed wash module up to and including level k plus one. And k du one is, is uh, that plus something else. So you see, for example, that k du bois implies k rational and k rational implies uh, k minus one du bois. Okay. What's behind this, as I said, there are some ingredients. Uh, one is this bernstein sato polynomial, which is an something coming from D modules, as expected. Then there is this minimal exponent. This is the smallest root. This is a, there is a nice relation between the low canonical threshold and the minimal exponent, but let me not mention that here. Anyways, this is one of these roots of the bernstein sato of the normalized bernstein sato polynomial. The key point here is that this minimal exponent is, was used by Saito and other people to actually characterize the bonus and rationality at the higher level. So k bonus is equivalent to this minimal exponent being at least k plus one, and k rational is, again, similarly characterized by strictly greater than k plus one. Now, <clears throat> The next ingredient here is this V filtration of Kashiwara Malgrange. This is a decreasing filtration indexed by rationals, whose, eigen, whose uh, um, graded pieces encode the eigenspaces of the vanishing cycles. <coughs> so vanishing cycles are defined by the V filtration, if you think of vanishing cycles at the level of uh, D modules. And uh, maybe I should say, since I still have one minute here, um, the minimal exponent is actually defined by Saito, calculated by Saito in something, in terms of something called micro-local filtration. So there is a um, alteration of this filtration, which encodes the, the minimal exponent. So to get our results, we had to relay the V-filtration, this micro-local filtration, And this is some calculation that uh, we did, <coughs> and other people have done variants of it. And I think I'm in time. Wow, shortest talk I ever gave. Thank you.